solar is here in Queens. This is a system that's tapping into the energy of the sun, which is as old as time. In one hour, the sun provides enough energy to power the entire planet for a year. As soon as I heard about it, I wanted to get, get some hands-on experience with it. Clean energy, you know, I like that idea. Can we build it? Yes, we can. 68 miles northwest of Aberdeen, Washington, on a remote patch of the Olympic Peninsula, lies the Native American village of Queets on the Quinault Indian Reservation, which stretches from the rugged and stormy Pacific Ocean inland to Lake Quinault. The village lies just one mile from where the mouth of the Queets River pours into the sea. I grew up here in Queets. We have multi-generations coming up. People are learning a lot of things because the challenge here is it is it is hard for our people. But my mom used to tell me, you don't really know how lucky you are sometimes. You know, you see people have all these things, but we live a simple life. And in my life, I feel like we've always lived the simple life. And it wasn't hectic, it wasn't hard. You know, and I did live in the city for a bit, and then I, I craved home, I missed home, I missed the quiet, the serenity, waking up early in the morning and just listening. It's pretty amazing. My name's Polly Kapoman. My maiden name was Kalama. I grew up in, actually my whole life until I was 18 in Queets. Uh, we didn't get electricity till 1968. So a long time ago, they used to have the power lines out like these are right here, the, all the way to Lake Quinault. You knew exactly where the power went out, but now they put the cables underground. So now it's harder to find. We have a few women here that are on that phone. Our lights are out. <laughs> and when are you gonna come fix them, you know? That is a big thing here. When, when our power goes out in 2007, when we had that big storm, we were over here at the, at the gym cooking for the whole community. Our intent was to just do the elders. And then the store was here at the time, and so they were losing food. So we said, hey, guess what? We're gonna cook all that food and we're gonna deliver it to our elders. Is that okay? <laughs> Yes, and so we did that. We were here breakfast, lunch, dinner for seven days. You know, people see the theoretical attraction of having solar power, and, and they go, well, I, I understand, but it's expensive, it, it's, it takes a lot of expertise, I just don't know if, if I have the wherewithal to make that happen. In a community setting, not on an individual home, here we have this new system. And so maybe that can be the first step at sort of overcoming that inertia and showing people this is a good concept. In terms of tactical importance, they experience power outages. We've all heard community members telling us this week that, uh, that power goes out. People need a place that's reasonably warm where they could come sleep. You could set up cots in here, use this as an emergency response center. They could have some lights. Uh, they could take a shower, they could do some limited cooking, they could charge their cell phones and their laptops. There's a lot of different benefits to having this system installed. It feels really good to be put in a system for people that really need it. Sue was just telling us today it costs $800 to fill her propane tank. You know, you gotta have a propane tank somewhere in your house because when the lights go out, you know, that's the only way you can cook. How often so. would you say the lights go out here? one too many times. Whenever there's a storm, sometimes even on a nice day, they'll go out. And you gotta save your battery. I mean, somebody can say, hey, Seattle's gonna have this storm. Well, we know different because it doesn't happen like that here. It is so different because the, the ocean is right over there. A lot of families will say, hey, I just got a freezer full of meat. What am I supposed to do, you know? If somebody's really that afraid of losing their food, other people will take it and keep it for them. It's what you do.
<laughs> we used propane lamps, we used kerosene lamps, we used candles. Our next door neighbor might have had inheritance coming from timber. They might share their big generator that they purchased and we'd have one solar light bulb in the middle of our house. <laughs> Seven total or seven kids and two parents? Seven kids and two parents in one tiny little house. <laughs> Tribes are really focused in on this, on this idea of sovereignty uh, and energy independence. We had a donation come in and I said, let's find a home for it somewhere here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm Kelsey Moldanke, senior planner for the Quinault Nation. Kelsey Moldinke called me up and he goes, hey Kalama, what do you think about this? And I'm like, yes! I worked with Twende and Bonneville Environmental Foundation to coordinate this project. In the spring of uh, 2020, uh, they approached us and said, hey, we have a partnership that might get you some solar panels. We of course jumped at the chance. A donated used system turned into, how about a donated brand new system? And then it was, they're at the end of the transmission lines, there's frequent outages in the community. So the system has batteries now. BEF's Renewables team has been working to develop solar projects on tribal lands and with other communities in the region for several years now. There's obviously a lot of opportunity to develop projects on tribal lands. Our work is rooted in partnerships, so we try to build relationships with tribes here first and get an understanding of what their needs and goals are as they relate to renewable energy. For the Quinault, this is their first solar project ever. This project here in Queets is our first experience really with renewable energy, so hopefully we can use that as a spring board to learn more and learn how to maintain. We do have engineering plans and design for a 100 kilowatt facility in Tohola and we have dreams of a 1 megawatt facility that we can then use to island uh, Tohola in the case of disaster like the tsunami and now we're starting to look at, at getting renewables into this. Having access to an abundant source of affordable energy means that education is possible, 21st century education. Having access to electricity powers healthcare. If you don't have good, reliable, affordable, sustainable electricity, you don't live in the 21st century. You live in a developing nation. It's enough electricity to have a meaningful economic development program. Me and my wife, we grew up here, uh, moved away for about 10 years, and then we've been back this past three years. It's cool to see something like this here. We just have to fight for what we need. We always have. You know, we talked earlier about getting the solar panel for low income, and every home here can be this. I know their light bills are outrageous. I hate to see them depend on it their whole lives. As long as there's been electric lights, on reservations, which in many cases didn't happen until the 50s or even 60s. Every month they wrote the check for their electrical bill and they sent that money off the reservation. The local utility or the, the local PUD or the local for-profit utility didn't employ any tribal members or if they did it was rare. It was just like a siphon or a vacuum cleaner of cash. Every household every month sending that money off the reservation. The young men here and the women, they're so talented in technology and I was hoping that this opportunity showing them the solar panel and how it could create and build, you can build on this. And so I think that next generation coming up is gonna change that. I think it's great. I think that it's something different. You know, we've never had any type of training like this before. And I think it's probably something that we will use more in the future. So yeah, the more people I think we can get involved, the better. Hearing this come to, come to this community, I wanted to get involved with this learning from all the experienced guys with lining the panels up, putting the clamps in where, you know, where they fit, running the wires, everything like that. So how far as far as center looks like? So maybe this can be the first step in a broader pattern of solar deployment. And I think the idea of doing it at a community level is a really smart way to start. Beyond access to renewable energy, beyond the bill savings, beyond the resilience that's brought by the batteries in this system, there is a workforce development portion of this install. Every Twenday install, there's education of some sort, whether we're teaching folks about how solar works or whether we're teaching folks how to maintain the systems that are being installed. Additionally, in this project, we are bringing in another partner, Solar Energy International and Remote Energy. Um, they are doing some formal solar installs 
install training virtually for several of the members of the of the community here. Hoping to build some bridges there between folks who might be taking an interest to solar install through their experience this week to potential job opportunities in the region for them. In terms of benefits of the project, there's obviously the economic benefits and lowering the electricity costs for the tribe. It's a community asset, you know, everyone driving by on the street can see the solar array, and so it's exciting to be a part of that and exciting to kind of develop this partnership model for the first time with Twende BEF and the Quinault. I have been so impressed with the quality of the people that Twende Solar has recruited uh, from the industry volunteered to become the program research assistant for Twin Day Solar and what that means is that I do um, anything they ask me to do to research. Really great to see the industry coming together and projects like this are only possible because partners and communities are coming together and sharing what they have. As mankind we're making small steps in energy and uh, bringing solar energy and that uh, this is the wave of the future probably for all around the world, around the country and that's actually pretty exciting. I want to see it, everything up and running and get to check it out, get a feel for it. And it's going to be nice. How you've come together in this small little community, donated your hours and materials and time. I for one am just really thankful and grateful and I want you all to know that you are good people as far as I'm concerned and thank you. And that's how you begin to build a meaningful sustainable tribal economy. It all starts with energy.